to today's program. I am Pallavi Gugoy of KK Handic State Open University. In today's program, I shall be discussing with you the Romantic Age. The program is designed as follows, table of contents, followed by the objectives, the Romantic Age and introduction, the literary forms, major writers, the age at a glance, followed by some important terms and suggested reading. The objectives are designed as follows. The design program will enable the learner to cross the ideals that characterize the Romantic Age, discuss the background that led to the intellectual movement, highlight the various literary forms of Romantic literature, gain an idea about some of the major writers of the period and their works, have a better perspective about the cultural history of the age, and appreciate the contributions of the age to the history of English literature. So, the Romantic Age must be making you curious, what is Romantic? So this is an introduction to the Romantic Age. Romantic Age in the history of English literature was a period radical in its assertion of nationalism, democracy, liberty and the individual spirit, followed by the Age of Revolution, that is the French Revolution mainly and the American Declaration of Independence. The Romantic Age is considered as a literary, intellectual and an artistic movement which has spread across Europe at the end of the 18th century. So this phenomenon one as the was at the age uh, bit what was at the end of the 18th century and just the beginning of the 19th century. The historical context of the revolutionary period is closely related to the rich body of romantic literature and hence cannot be studied in isolation. Right? So uh, the essence of romanticism is that quote unquote literature must reflect all that is spontaneous and unaffected in nature and in man and be free to follow its own fancy in its own way. Do you think that is beautiful? In emphasizing imagination over rational thought, which is, was, which is what romantic uh, ideal was all about, the romantic age proved to be a major reaction against the ideals of the Enlightenment age. You will notice in the Enlightenment age, what had happened was that there was a much more focus on rational thought, on reason, on empirical reasoning, and uh, logic but now it was the imagination the fancy you know uh, the dreamlike uh, stuff of imagination which is gaining importance the romantic imagination had dealt with the individual subjective experience the irrational the supernatural mystical and the spiritual elements so it was roughly at the tail end of the 18th century that the romantic period was considered to have begun Right? and reach its peak from around 1800 to 1850. These are just, these are just um, you know, ways of uh, marking time. Uh, it doesn't mean that this, uh, this period, this movement began exactly in these particular years, but is considered to have begun around this particular period of time. Romanticism is the, in the real sense, is a transatlantic cultural movement, uh, which uh, bore subtle differences across countries which adopted it as an ideal. So as far as England is concerned, the Romantic movement coincided with and as a reaction to the Industrial Revolution that marked the end of the century. All right? During this time, there was also a major intellectual reaction uh, to the philosophy of Enlightenment, which idealized the advancement of knowledge through science, skepticism, reason and rational. All right? The Romantics emphasized on what? On emotion over reason, imagination over the rational and asserted that no empirical or scientific knowledge could reveal the ultimate truth in the great mysteries of life. Uh, so they extol the virtues of passion, imagination, freedom and the supernatural and the spiritual. So these are the characteristics of the rom Romantic Age. You will do well to know them down. In a nutshell, the ideas that characterize the Romantic Age are the emphasis on individuality, one's creative gifts and the subjective experience. Their way of looking at the world was very colored and very different from that of the rational way of looking at the world. It stood in contrast to the literary ideals of the neoclassical age. All right? Reaction. It uh, stood as a reaction against the ideals of the 18th century Enlightenment age. Okay? Because just before it, this was happening at the end of the 18th century and just before it was the Enlightenment age. There was this uh, period where reasoning where knowledge uh, based on uh, you know uh, facts uh, factual knowledge these were given importance in fact they were given importance by relegating uh, these uh, subjective way of looking at the world that is through experience to imagination to fancy um, and emotions so they focused 
on imagination over reason, passion over rationality. Passion is a very strong word here, passion, you know, something which is felt from inside, uh, you know, the depth of uh, feeling uh, that comes from within a human subject, okay, instead of the objective um, and, you know, objective way, objective scientific uh, man, uh, imagine uh, another who is very passionate and who is uh, a dreamer, a romantic man was somebody who was a dreamer, who loved nature, who loved to dream about the supernatural also and um, who saw the world uh, through his colored lenses, all right? So um, the romantic ideals were basically imagination, emotion, intuition, and freedom, an experience of the sensory over the spiritual. There was a fascination with myths and the supernatural, gothic and the exotic, and there was a devotion to beauty, that is the aesthetic uh, qualities of anything, anything and everything. You know, they saw beauty everywhere, beauty in nature, beauty in supernatural things, in everything. Uh, there was a love and worship of nature and there was an interest in the rural country life and they were opposed to the ills of urban life as such. So the politicians and the philosophers manifested a new spirit of the age and extolled the worth of the individual which then found a reflection in romantic literature. So these are the literary forms. After 1770, that is at the later years of the 18th century, when we say 1770, conduct books by women writers became very popular just as children's literature. The writers of children's books included John Newbery, Anna Letitia Barbold, William Godwin, Charles and Mary Lamb, among others. During this time, they were lending or uh, circulating libraries, book clubs and book societies, uh, which provided an, an easy access uh, for books, uh, to access books, and played a vital role in disseminating uh, you know, different for literary forms like popularizing poetry and novels, in particular the genre of sensibility and gothic fiction. Uh, we can learn about these uh, literary forms more in much more in details in uh, another in, or in a subsequent uh, program. So the early 1790s saw the publishing of radical works such as Thomas Paine's uh, Rights of Man, Burke's, uh, Edmund Burke's Reflections on the Revolution in France, etc. And the circulation of radical pamphlets were there. There were, there were newspapers and weeklies uh, which were circulating. Um, you know, also there was literary criticism which appeared in leading magazines which was very influential in establishing the works of writers like Thomas De Quincey uh, who, who was known for his personal confessions in writing, uh, Samuel Taylor Coleridge who was uh, celebrated uh, for his ideas of um, you know fancy and imagination, you must have uh, read about this also or heard about it somewhere. So Leigh Hunt uh, was again another important figure who penned uh, satirical reviews and you know in a way shaped literary criticism uh, of this particular age. Charles Lamb, who wrote the personal essay, was a master of the personal essay. William Hazlitt, who was uh, you know f who used a familiar style of infused irony and political uh, radicalism and William Godwin and Mary Wollstonecraft, okay, who wrote radical works on human rights. So during this period, they were, um, there was a widespread uh, circulation of periodicals and literary magazines, you know, which established a rich body of literary criticism, like the Edinburgh Review, the Quarterly Review, Blackwood's Magazine, the Westminster Review, the Spectator, which is very famous, 1838, you must note this, uh, the Spectator, the Athenium, Fraser's Magazine, etc. There were many, many, many magazines and um, journals and periodicals uh, circulating during this time. Coleridge, Blake and Byron contributed to a new approach and interest in the literary form of the epic and epic poetry. Like for example, Helen Maria Williams's brief epic uh, Peru, it was in the form of an epic, and then uh, Keats's epic poem Hyperion, which was again a form of epic poetry. All right? So the romantic fragment also had emerged as a new accidental form uh, from the period, like for example, uh, S.T. Coleridge's uh, Kubla Khan. You will do well to know that S.T. Coleridge wrote under the influence of opium sometimes. That's why a romantic fragment, because sometimes he wrote under the influence of opium and suddenly there was this fragment, he, uh, you know, he just lost his vision of writing and he just uh, forgot what he was writing about in this writing um, mood just wore off or something of that kind of an uh, or some kind of an interruption uh, which uh, left the work incomplete uh, and thus a fragment a romantic fragment 
which was uh, still completing itself because it was so beautiful to read and uh, textbooks even today prescribe uh, these uh, beautiful pieces. Shelley's um, in incomplete work, The Triumph of Life, Byron's Unfinished Don Juan, these are all examples of romantic fragment. Uh, there are many examples. This is not to say that these are the only examples. There are many examples. These have just been selected to uh, cite uh, for your ease of reference. A significant body of biographical, autobiographical and semi-autobiographical works were also um, uh, in circulation. Why? Because the romantic uh, ideal also projected the subjective, the personal and uh, the subjective experience of man, which is why you have the autobiographical form the semi-autobiographical form or you know basically the biographical form all right all the major romantic poets had experimented with romantic drama written and meant for reading rather than stage performances like Shelley's Prometheus Unbound a closet drama which was meant for reading and Byron's Manfred in the romantic period there were various schools of poetry which debated their ideas on what made good poetry the basic characteristics of romantic poetry were spontaneous flow of inspiration in the creation of sublime poetry okay, and the emphasis on imagination and creative passion, romanticizing the ordinary as fifth subject of poetry, that is the common man, any incident of or the regular mundane things, a sense of wonder for the supernatural elements of life and inspiration from nature and idyllic locales. So these were the uh, romantic ideals um, that were practice in romantic poetry. In Wordsworth's uh, famous phrase, poetry was a spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings and he called poetry a sensitive plant. Lyric poetry was also a popular form during the period and there was also a revival of the romantic sonnet. Uh, the major novelists of the period, writers who wrote uh, romantic novels like uh, Jane Austen, uh, Bernie, Maria, Edgeworth, and Radcliffe, Walter Scott, and Mary Shelley, among others. They wrote um, their wonderful works during this period of time, which are still, uh, you know, which still stand as evergreen classics. Uh, there was a distinct and continued interest in the genre of the Gothic and the sensational novel, because there was a, um, you know, marked interest in the uh, supernatural side um, of the world. So uh, in the super in the supernatural, so he had such works uh, like uh, Math Matthew Lewis's *The Monk*, uh, Mary Shelley's *Frankenstein*. I'm sure you must have heard about about this work. Uh, so these works uh, were very interesting. They stirred the interest of the readers. The novelist Walter Scott wrote classics such as *Ivanhoe*, *Rob Roy*, among others. Jane Austen wrote realistic novels like *Sense and Sensibility*, *Pride and Prejudice*, *Mansfield Park*, etc. The literary features of the Romantic Age, in a nutshell, are belief in the imagination and insight, emphasis on the subjective experience and individuality, significance of emotions, sentiments and creativity, freedom to explore the sensory and the spiritual, extolling and upholding the beauty of nature, approval of the use of fancy that is controlled by judgment, conveying the movements of vision, exploring the realm of the supernatural and the transcendental, representing the experience of common man, and role of poet as interpreter more than a creator. So we come to the major writers, William Blake. Blake was known as a prophetic poet. He was a skilled painter and an engraver, and he's supposed to have seen visions. He saw prophetic visions uh, while walking in the fields as a child. In fact, he saw these visions while walking in the field or you know while staring out of the window. He's uh, said to have uh, seen visions, and he was also from a very young age. Uh, very religious, he was brought up in a religious household and maybe this has bearings on his later works as well and development as a person. So he is considered as a visionary or a prophetic poet. Some of his works are songs of, songs of innocence and of experience, poetical sketches, visions of the daughters of Albion, book of Eurizin, the book of Ahania, etc. William Wordsworth, born in London in the northwest Lake District, famous Lake District, okay. Uh, you must have heard about Lake Poets also, who were a group of poets uh, who got together at Wordsworth's uh, place and discussed the intellectual strands of thought and, you know, who had uh, interactive discussions together. So he was born um, and brought up there in London and um, he is known for his lyrical ballads, which is also called the Manifesto of the English Romantic Criticism. Now, the lyrical ballads was written in 1798 
and this date is very important because you will uh, know that uh, because of this particular work there was a new interest the romantic way of looking at the world in the romantic perceptions so he was appointed the poet laureate after the demise of robert salvi in um, 1843 some of his works are lyrical ballads with other poems poems in two volumes guide to the lakes the excursion Lautomia, and the prelude st college i had already talked about college uh, he was an english poet he was a literary critic and philosopher who built an association with the lake poets so he was associated with the lake poets whom i just mentioned uh, his works create an atmosphere of what he called the willing suspense of uh, belief with the elements of the mysterious and the supernatural the three poems that are considered as masterpieces are the rhyme of the ancient mariner christabel and kubla khan john keats keats developed an early interest in the classics history and renaissance literature he was very well learned in these fields and he had said his imagination was a monastery and he a monk some of his works are the eve of saint agnes La Bella Dame Sans Mercy, on first looking into Chapman's Homer, Endymion, Hyperion, Lamia, Otho, etc. And he had written several odes, and he is known for his six odes uh, Ode to a Nightingale, Ode, to, uh, Ode on a Grecian Urn, Ode to Psyche, Ode on Melancholy, Ode on Indolence, and Ode on Fancy. The next poet, P.B. Shelley. Shelley was one of the finest lyric poets and was radical in his socio political beliefs. His poetry had two different strains or distinct moods, that of a violent reformer and that imbued with the sp appealing spirit of nature. Uh, some of his works are Ozymandias, Ode to the West Wind, To a Skylark, Prometheus Unbound, Revolt of Islam, Defense of Poetry, etc. Then the next um, rather essayist known for his essays, personal essays, Charles Lamb, was a writer and essayist who was widely read for his personal essays. Lamb had a carefree childhood and as a young man looked after his sister Mary who was prone to mental illness but he was very caring as a person and uh, he devoted his life in fact for her in her care he had collaborated on three books with Mary among which a Tales from Shakespeare was most well received and he wrote under the pen name of Elia while uh, writing for the London magazine and this name stayed somehow because uh, this is how readers uh, associated um, him with his works uh, some of his uh, works are essays of Elia Rosamund Gray, John Woodville, and the last essays of Elia. So we come to the major writers at a glance. Uh, for example, some of the important writers associated with the Romantic Age are William Blake, William Hazlitt, William Wordsworth, Dorothy Wordsworth, who was the sister of William Wordsworth, S.T. Coleridge, Robert Southey, John Keats, P.B. Shelley, James Henry Leyhunt, better known as Leyhunt, Thomas De Quincey, Lord Byron, Charles Lamb, Benjamin Robert Hayden, uh, Mary Wollstonecraft, Felicia Dorothea Hemans, Letitia Elizabeth London, and Elizabeth Barrett Browning. The Age at a Glance, the joint publication of Lyrical Ballads by Wordsworth and Coleridge. Mind you, this was a collaborative effort in 1798, was considered as a significant milestone for the Romantics as it had launched the English Romantic movement. Romantic literature is characterized by, to sum it up in just a short phrase, to quote Victor Hugo, liberalism in literature. All right? So literature was, you know, liberal. It was not constructed in the sense, you know, it was not constructed by the particular ideals of uh, rational, of uh, empirical thought, of reasoning, and objectivity. It was much more subjective. It was much more open. It was uh, exploratory. It was a liberty of, uh, you know, thought and imagination. Its emphasis was on the creative, the sublime, and the supernatural, the important characteristic that differentiates the English Romantics from the writers of the 18th century, that is, uh, the writers of the neoclassical age, is the emphasis and significance of, on the imagination. Here are some of the important terms that you might come across. If you have heard about fancy and imagination, in Biographia Literia Coleridge had pointed out the distinction between two faculties of the mind, that is the fancy and imagination. Imagination is the vital source of creation. The fancy associated with memory accumulates all that is seen, but the imagination recreates and transforms it anew. So the fancy is associated with memory and the imagination recreates and transforms all that is seen in a new way. Alright? Coleridge divided imagination as follows, primary and secondary. In the primary imagination which 
uh, in his own words, automatically balances and fuses the innate capacities and powers of the mind with the external presence of the objective world that the mind receives to the senses. And in the secondary imagination or the free will, uh, what happens is that it gets dissolved, dissipates in order to recreate or to form something new. So um, the role of memory is passive and the role of imagination is active. Right? Uh, the negative capability is another term which was Keats, John Keats had used in one of his uh, letters. He stated that an artist in the creation of something was to negate himself, okay, which was to completely uh, distance himself in a way as if the artist did not exist. Such an artist uh, was capable of feeling in uncertainties, mysteries, doubts, without any irritable reaching after fact and reason. Okay, So this was uh, the act of negating oneself while writing. Uh, with, while going through the experience of writing or expressing, uh, this negative capability quality was very important, according to Keats. So here are some of the suggested reading. You might do well to refer to The Romantic Imagination by Maurice Barra. Uh, Romanticism and Oxford Guide is a huge one. You can uh, you know, avail it uh, in a good library. Then uh, English Literature, Its History and Its Significance by William J. Long, which is commonly available, and Romanticism and Anthology by Duncan Wu. Here's one of the website that which might be helpful to you, www.bloomsburyacademy.com. There are many websites uh, which will be helpful to you, but you will do well to note the important uh, characteristics, the ideals who led this uh, movement ahead. All right? So with this, I come to the end of today's program. Thank you, dear learner, and all the best.